Hello and welcome to Amar Astrobytes, where we bring you stories about astronomy in bite-sized chunks. My name is Michael Burton, the director of Amar's Observatory and Planetarium. Today's Astrobytes continues with our tour of the solar system. For this third part, we visit some of the so-called minor bodies of the solar system. These are the asteroids, the comets and the Kuiper Belt objects. We start with the asteroid belt. This is a torus-shaped region located roughly between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Here, there are large numbers of rocky, mostly irregularly shaped bodies that orbit the Sun. We call them asteroids. About 200 are larger than 100 kilometers across, and it is estimated that there are around 1 million asteroids bigger than 1 kilometer in size. There will be a vast number of smaller bodies, all the way down to particles of dust. Yet their total mass is tiny around 3% of the mass of our Moon. They were all formed from the primordial solar nebula as a group of planetesimals, i.e. baby planets. But Jupiter's gravity perturbed them and stopped them from accreting to form a planet. They are now rubble left over from our solar system's birth. The largest asteroid is Ceres, over 900 kilometers across, the only one large enough to be called a dwarf planet, for it has sufficient self-gravity to make itself spherical. Discovered by Piazzi in 1801, at first it was thought to be a planet. Three times the Earth's distance from the Sun, this year is five times longer. The rocky surface is covered in craters, but underneath there is a large mantle made of water ice, possibly even containing more water than there is on Earth. The inset shows Ceres' largest mountain, the Huamons, a volcanic dome that is four kilometers high. Our next asteroid is Vesta, the second largest in the belt at 500 kilometers across. However, it's not quite large enough for self-gravity to make it spherical, so its shape is more like a rugby ball. Another rocky, impact-scarred boulder full of craters. Many meteorites have been found here on Earth that were ejected from Vesta in the collisions that produced some of these craters. The final asteroid on our tour is Eros much smaller at just 30 kilometers across with an irregular appearance, somewhat like a peanut. Eros was the first near-Earth asteroid to be discovered in 1898. It was also the first asteroid orbited by a spacecraft a century later. Eros's elliptical orbit crosses that of Mars, but doesn't quite reach in as far as the Earth's, so there is no danger of it colliding with us. The Kuiper Belt is a donut-shaped ring of icy objects around the Sun. It extends from the orbit of Neptune, 30 astronomical units away, to about twice that distance. Like the asteroids, Kuiper Belt objects are debris left over from the formation of the solar system. Neptune's gravity possibly stopped the planet forming out here. However, there may be hundreds of thousands of such icy bodies, larger than 100 kilometers in the diameter many, many more than the number of similarly sized asteroids. Several are large enough to be categorized as dwarf planets. Some even have their own moons. The Kuiper Belt also contains a vast number of comets. However, only around 2,000 Kuiper Belt objects have actually been catalogued so far, as they are incredibly hard to find, being so small and so distant. Pluto is the most famous Kuiper Belt object, discovered somewhat by accident by Clyde Tombaugh in 1930 when out planet hunting. It was long thought to be the ninth planet. However, its orbit is highly elliptical and inclined to that of the other planets. It also turned out to be very much smaller in size, just 2,000 kilometers across, even smaller than our moon. When astronomers started discovering other objects beyond Pluto, it was time to correct this mistake. Pluto was declassified as a planet by the International Astronomical Union in 2006. It is now known as a dwarf planet. This image of Pluto was taken by the New Horizons spacecraft that had sped by in 2015. The white, snow-like plane is a Sputnik Planitia, craterless and very young, probably no older than 100 million years. Looking like a giant heart, it is made up of frozen nitrogen. The red colorings may be due to frozen gases like methane. The lack of craters 
means that Pluto must be geologically active. Amazingly, Pluto has five known moons. We see three of them here, Charon, Nixon and Hydra. They all orbit around the center of mass outside of Pluto. Charon is half the size of Pluto, making Pluto Charon a double dwarf planetary system, the only one in our solar system. Pluto and Charon are tidally locked. From both their surfaces, the other body always appears in exactly the same position in the sky. Their different colors means that Charon has a different composition and structure to, to Pluto, one yet to be unraveled. New Horizons was directed to fly by another Kuiper Belt object after leaving Pluto. This was the recently discovered Arrakos, which it reached four years later in 2019. It is the most distant object that humanity has yet explored by spacecraft, 6.6 .6 billion kilometers from the Earth. Another surprise was in store, this double lobe structure looking like a partially flattened snowman. It is also very red. Arrakis is actually two objects that have gently merged together into one, about 20 kilometers across. It provides us with a fossil record of what the outer solar system was like when it formed 4.5 billion years ago, a primordial object that helps us to understand our origins. Beyond the Kuiper Belt lives an even larger region of our solar system, the Oort Opic Cloud. It is the home to billions of comets. Comets are dirty snowballs, frozen gases, rocks and dust orbiting the sun. They also can be coated with organics. When frozen, they may, may be just a few kilometers across. But if the orbit approaches the sun, they heat up and the ice starts to evaporate. Dust and gas is then blown off by the pressure of the sun's wind and radiation, forming a tail that can stretch for millions of kilometers into space. Comets are leftovers from the birth of the solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. They may even have been responsible for bringing water and organic compounds, the building blocks for life, to the early Earth. The most famous comet is Halley. Orbiting the Sun every 76 years, most of us get the chance to see Halley once in our lifetimes. The last encounter was in 1986, the next one is in 2061. The orbit stretches from beyond Neptune to closer than Venus. Halley's approach to the Sun has been recorded since 240 BC, but its reappearances were not recognized as being from the same body until Edmund Halley did so in 1705. In the first great prediction made using Newton's recently derived law of gravity, he predicted a comet he saw in 1682 would return again in 1758. It was spotted on Christmas Eve that year, though Halley himself had died some 16 years earlier. Comets can be spectacular objects if the orbits take them close to the Earth. This image shows the multiple tails of Comet McNaught as seen from Siding Spring Observatory in Australia on the night of its closest approach to the Earth. The vista is spreading right across the sky. Perhaps the best studied comet is this one, Comet 67P as it is popularly known. It was a target of the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission. Look at its chaotic appearance. The Philae lander was set out from Rosetta and descended onto the comet's surface. Though most unfortunately it got wedged into a crack, hiding its solar cells from the sun, so that the batteries rapidly discharged and shortening the mission. Seen here, heading towards the sun as I speak, is Comet Atlas, due to make its closest approach to the sun on the 31st of May 2020. However, as this picture was taken on the 12th of April shows, comet is breaking up and disintegrating. It's unlikely to reach naked eye visibility. Not all comets end up as spectacular sights in our sky when they are near to the Earth. We rarely know when the next comet will grace our skies until shortly beforehand. This ends today's Astrobytes. Next time we will begin a journey to the stars. The journey will start with our own local star, the Sun. Thank you. <laughs>